Hi guys and welcome to Hulskill Hunter for a brand new Halloween DIY project. In this video series I am going to create an animated witch cartoon, so some kind of simple cartoon animatronic. And you heard me right, this will be a video series, so don't forget to hit subscribe so you don't miss any of the upcoming updates. As I said, I'm going to create an animated witch cartoon, so that means in the end something will move around. But before I can create this, I need a cartoon at the right size. And since the cartoons in this size are not available for purchase, I start this video series by creating my own one. The cauldron itself in the end will be robust, weatherproof, so it can withstand rain. It may not be the cheapest way to create a cauldron, but in the end you have something for a long, long time. And according to the instruction I show you, I created a smaller version three years ago and I haven't had any issues with damaging. And with that, we start into the project and I'll show you how I create the base of the cauldron. So have fun with the video and let's go! So right, the whole project starts with this motor bucket. It has a diameter of 58cm and a height of 32cm and at the end my cauldron will have a total height of about 55-60cm. to 60 centimeter. So as a first step I will add some support legs at the bottom of the motor bucket to add some additional height. Alright, I attached the support legs and I add some additional screws in this direction and in this direction to give more stability and on the opposite side of course too. And now the motor bucket nearly has its final height and a very stable stand. So alright, this doesn't look like a cauldron. Uh, this is what comes now and to give the motor bucket the shape of the cauldron I created this template here of cardboard and I hold it this way and then I draw the shape in the way I like it. And at the bottom we have this nice large bulbous shape here with a distance of 20 cm at this point and at the top we have this nice large rounded edge. The protrusion at top is used to hide the mechanics of the animatronics later on and these pieces will be created from styrofoam and I counted them and I need 36 pieces. So next up I use a permanent marker to draw the line around the template. So and then you can use a sharp knife to cut it out or if you have a hot wire use this or I use this old manual jigsaw here which also works perfect to cut out the roundings. And now 35 more to go. So here we have our 36 pieces. This is what it looks like and now I will attach those pieces to the motor bucket. After cutting all the parts it's time to glue them into place like this. And for this reason I have already cleaned the surface of the motor bucket using some acetone. Uh, this is simply to get rid of all the greasiness on the surface. And for gluing the styrofoam into place, I use some construction adhesive 
And this is not the cheapest I have to admit, but I had some pretty good experience with it in the past. So I will add some adhesive here and glue it in place like this. And what you can't see on the recording is I add some marks at the top here. So I have two centimeter for the styrofoam, two centimeter spacing, two centimeter for styrofoam and so on, all the way around. And this gives me a good, pretty good division. So I have some equal spacing between the styrofoam parts. So all right, the next day the glue has dried and the pieces are in place. Now it's time to fill the gaps in between and therefore I use expanding foam. But before I do this, here are three tips which I take away the last time I built such a cauldron. Tip number one, don't fill the gaps completely in the first step. This is what I did the last time and I had to cut away a lot of expanding foam afterwards and that was a lot of work. So it's easier to work in two or three layers here. Tip number two, you will have a lot of leftovers like this one here from cutting those templates. Just feel free to use them and put those pieces in between. This will help you save expanding foam and to be honest, if you don't know what to do with those pieces, you will just simply throw them away at the end. So put them in between. And tip number three, you will use some cheap tape here. This is from the painters here. And put it around like this. And this will help you to keep the expanding foam in between so it will not fall out. And on the other hand, you will have some kind of barrier here. And this will help you to keep the expanding foam a little bit in shape. So it's easier to smooth out the rounding at the end. So as a first, I will add the tape at about a quarter of the rounding here, and then it's time to add the expanding foam. day the expanding foam did its work and it might look like a mess but it isn't. It's not as bad as it looks like and the idea of using less expanding foam works very well in this area here but if you look a little bit deeper you see the expanding foam comes out very much like here or here. Or if you go around we have here some areas but overall I'm very happy with it. It could be better of course, but this one looks a lot better than my last cauldron I've created after adding the first layer of expanding foam. So now I will cut away all those expanding foam which comes out. So I will recreate the shape of the cauldron and then I will fill all those gaps here. And then it's time to flip the cauldron around because this is the bottom and if we go a little bit deeper this is the top edge and here I have to fill all those gaps with expanding foam too of course.
So right, I'm done with filling the larger gaps and as you can see from the color I used different expanding foam this time and I already used a knife to give it a rough shape and I think you can quite good see how the shape of the cauldron will look like at the end. In this area here I added some additional wood to provide some kind of platform where the cauldron will sit on at the end and now it's time to work on the upper edge and therefore I will turn this thing around now. So at the top edge we have this nice rounding here and this will be created similarly to the bottom side. So to make life a little bit easier for me I will add some strips of painter's tape around and then I will fill all those gaps using expanding foam. So right, the cauldron got its final shape and now it's time to smooth the surface because at the moment it is very, very rough. And to do this I use this horse brush here and simply go over the surface. Like this. And, and like this. And using the horse brush you can remove a lot of material in a very short time and you will get a very nice surface. And when this step is done, I will use such a bottle of a fruit smoothie here, which fits very well in the inner rounding here. 120 grit sandpaper, wrap it around and then simply go into this rounding here. In this way I can smooth out the rounding here. And this will be the last step. And I think I will go over the whole surface using the 120 grit sandpaper to get a very smooth surface before attaching the glass fiber mat. So right, the base of the cauldron is finished so far and has its final shape. Of course there are some small spots that I have to go over again but this is not a big deal. Next up I will add the outer shell to the cauldron so it will get robust and weatherproof and of course the cauldron will get an appropriate paint. But this is something I will show you in my next project update because we reached the end for today's video. 
If you liked the video, if you found it helpful, please give me a thumbs up. If you have questions about the project, feel free to write them in the comment section, but don't forget to hit subscribe so you don't miss any of the further updates here on my channel. For today, I say thanks for watching, see you next time and happy Halloween!